Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie. Sorry, I've started a bit early because uh, I've got very little time. And I just wanted to have a little rant. This is a rant of the day, really. Um, I don't know if you know, but today, is, on a Wednesday, it's Prime Minister's Question Time, isn't it? <laughs> My dog trying to get some dog food. Hey! Um, it's a bit of a long story. Anyway, so today is Prime Minister's Questions. And I just, I'm just going to show it, you know, I'm not even going to comment on it. I still just cannot believe um, what, oh gosh, I've got to find it now, I'm gone. It's in Prime Minister's Questions. Rishi Sunak had a little bit of a go at Angela Rayner. Now, whatever you think about Angela Rayner or you don't think about Angela Rayner or what you think, what you think about um, Rishi Sunak or you don't think about Rishi Sunak, I think one thing that we do all know is that Rishi Sunak, he's quite rich, isn't he? He's quite rich, you know, like billionaire perhaps or certainly his wife is. And another thing that we know about Rishi Sunak and his wife is they've been dodging tax over and over again, dodging tax, do dodging tax. And then today in Prime Minister's Question Time, oh, there it is, I found it, um, he's having a go at Angela Rayner. How dare he, honestly. Right, I'm just going to play it because I say I haven't got much time. I can't get into a debate about it. Some of you probably think Rishi Sunak is fantastic. I don't know. Maybe you hate Angela Rayner or you hate Keir Starmer. But let's just watch this. I, I was just, just can't believe. I'm privileged to be the proud owner of a copy of the former Prime Minister's new book, <laughs> it's a rare unsigned oh yeah because in the meantime Liz Truss the worst prime minister that Britain has ever had who was prime minister for about 30 seconds she's written a book copy <laughs> it's quite it's the only unsigned copy it's quite the read she claims the Tory party's disastrous kamikaze budget that triggered chaos for millions was her words the happiest moment of her premiership. Oh. Has the Prime Minister met anyone with a mortgage who agrees? <laughs> so, of course, it was Liz Trust and Kamikaze Quasi Karting that ruined the British economy just literally within a, a few days of becoming Prime Minister, you know, made this sweeping sort of budget that just... You know, everything crashed, people's mortgages went up, cost of living crisis got even worse. And now she's written a book and said it was the happiest time of her life. Well, Mr Speaker, all I'd say is he uh, ought to spend a bit less time reading that book and a, bit, and, a bit more, and a bit more time reading the Deputy Leader's tax advice. So they're making it as a big issue at the moment. They're saying that because Angela Rayner sold her mum's council house or something that she did. Anyway, all the Tories, you know, we're in election year. They're just getting nasty, really nasty now, you know, making allegations that aren't true, trying to blacken people's character. It'll get worse as time goes on because they just say things and then later there'll be an inquiry and it'll be, oh, I shouldn't have said this, shouldn't have done that. They're already backtracking a little bit. And there he is having a go at Angela Rayner, who, you know, just came up working class woman. You know, she deserves whatever you think of her. She's come up from, you know, a working class estate. She left school early. She looked after her mum because her mum had, uh, um, was terminally ill. She had children young like people tend to do on these council estates and things. And she's come through all that and, and uh, you know, made her own way to be deputy leader of the Labour Party. Now, whether you agree with her politics or not, 
she's done it herself. She wasn't born with a silver spoon in her, her mouth. She didn't have mummy and daddy paying for her to go through university. Mummy and daddy bailing her out. She was looking after her 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 mum. You know, how dare they? How dare they criticise her like that? Because whether you agree with her politics or not, she has done it all herself. Nobody's given her anything. She's worked for it. Whereas that um, twonk, sorry, uh, what has he worked for? You know, he's only prime minister because he wants it to be... He doesn't, he doesn't need the money. He's doing it because he just wants to be prime minister. Nobody voted for him. Did you vote for him? Did you vote for Rishi Sunak? There'd be none of you out there that voted for Rishi Sunak because he never got elected, not even by his own party. They voted for Liz Truss. So he's an unelected prime minister doing untold damage to Britain, as if there's not enough damage been done already. Mr Speaker, we've got a billionaire prime minister and a billionaire that both of whose families have used schemes to avoid millions of pounds of tax smearing a working class woman. And, I know. and the Prime Minister, the former Prime Minister, has a long list of people to blame for the economic misery. They don't want to hear it. They made her Prime Minister. And millions of people are paying the price. She's got a long list of people to blame. So anyway, I just wanted to have a little rant about that. And then the, the, there's another thing that I want to have a little rant about. Again, probably a lot of you like Nigel Farage. To me, Nigel Farage is, he's ruined Britain. He's one of the people who've ruined Britain, caused so much hatred, uh, so much, you know, just... He started off as a bit of a joke, really, didn't he? And then he's turned out he's absolutely wrecked. Britain in my eyes and our reputation across the world anyway so he's gone to this um gone to this European conference thing in Brussels and it's been shut down because he was going to speak with Orban who's the Hungarian prime minister who's also an absolute racist and of course Suella Braverman what would the party be without Suella Braverman that lovely person so anyway, it got closed down, and the authorities decided they would they their far right far right conference. Notice how they're calling them that. This is like um, you know, Britain never used to be far anything. It wasn't extremist in any way, and now it's all extremism. And it's not only the far right. You've got like the Islamic extremists. Why is everybody extreme? What happened to the tolerance in Britain of each other? Police in Brussels attempted to shut down a gathering of hard-right nationalist European politicians. The National Conservatism Conference had just kicked off with Brexit Party founder Nigel Farage. This policeman looks about 12, bless him. I mean, he does look young. They say, you know, you're getting old when the policemen start to look young. He does look young as addressing the audience when a police officer ordered it to stop. The authorities have decided to shut off the event and I'm here to signify you the decision. So I have the papers here and I'm here to enforce the, the decision. So notice even in their own country, in Brussels, they have to speak English because these idiots won't speak French or, you know, they wouldn't dream of learning another language. You think everyone should speak English. So even imagine that in Britain, if they expected the police to speak to them in bloody uh, Urdu or French or Spanish or whatever, you know, but of course, you know, Britain's different. Yeah, people should speak in English to us. Now, the only good thing probably about Brexit is that we didn't have to see Nigel Farage ever again in Europe or Suella Braverman or any of those horrible, horrible people. So how have they ended up going to Europe? Bugger off, we don't want you in Europe. Stay wherever you live, whatever holes that you inhabit, whatever rocks you come under. We don't want you in Europe. So, you know, bugger off, that's it, you know. They were there. Do you remember when they, when Bre uh, when Britain left the European Union, and that horrible Anne Widdicombe and this horrible Nigel Farage turning their back on the European flag like children? 
you know, people have grown up like that. It was like a Benny Hill show type exit from Europe. It was embarrassing. And that's why now in Europe, Britain, British people are a bit persona non grata. They've caused this reputation for us. Uh, they, You know, it's embarrassing. And Nigel Farage, who incidentally, his children have all got European nationality, made sure of that. He he could go. He's got. He could get dual na nationality. He'll leave Britain probably in the end and go and live in Europe because he knows it's better to live in Europe than live in Britain. Nobody wants to live in Britain anymore, and um, you know because of people like him. And British people who are abroad like me, we have to live with that reputation, which is embarrassing. So it's a decision of the the burgomaster, the mayor, okay. to to okay. shut off the event. So it is uh, the motivation lies within, and you have different articles that explain that. He should just speak to him in French. He should just speak to him in French and confuse him. You know, I, I just if he was in England, he won't get spoken to in French by the British police. The British police would speak to him in english of course they would but why why do these get a better treatment what you know why speak to him in english speak to him in french and just tell him to bugger off the decision the decision was taken by emir kir the mayor of san jos tenord a municipality in brussels one of the reasons was the fear of a counter protest organized by anti-fascist groups Police surrounded the venue and prevented anyone from entering, including keynote speakers such as Member of the European Parliament, Patricia Chagnon, and the leader of the French political party, Le Conquête, Eric Semour. Normalement, en Europe, nous avons inventé la liberté d'expression, quelle que soit cette expression. C'est bien pour ça qu'on appelle ça la liberté d'expression. Sinon, si on est là à juger qui a le droit de parler, qui n'a plus le droit de parler, ça s'appelle une liberté Attendees decide. Okay, so would you let Hitler speak then if he went out there to speak? Would you, you know, freedom to speak? Yes, but not to speak, not to incite hatred. But to stay inside the venue, allowing the conference to continue. Belgian Prime Minister Alexander de Croo has condemned the police intervention as unacceptable. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and former Polish Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki, who were both among the speakers, also weighed in with criticism. We were supposed to present uh, our views on some other conference, uh, but this was under such a pressure, and still is, um, and there's such a censorship type of approach that last time I saw such a censorship was in, in the communist times, I can tell you. The think tank that organized the event legally challenged the decision, claiming freedom of speech was under attack. The anti-fascist counter-protest that had sparked police intervention took place in the afternoon with less than 100 participants. So that's it. So I just wanted to have a little run. Some people will agree with me. Some people won't agree with me. The funeral me. of Roberto Cavalli, fashion but, uh, designer and entrepreneur. I can't stand Nigel Farage. I hate everything he stands for. He just stands for... Um, it's just him and people like him. They've just ruined Britain and British reputation all over Europe. And, uh, you know, what's left for Britain now? What is left for Britain now? Well, hopefully a change of government. Let's hope it makes a difference. But do you know how long it'll take? Even if we have a change of government, how long will it take? You know, 13 years ruining our reputation, ruining our country. Um how long will it take to get our reputation back and to make the country fit to live in again? I don't know. But anyway, there you go. So, I mean, I'm not talking about translators when you go to police stations. I'm talking about when the police go out to issue, when the police go out to issue a, a dispersal order like that, you think the police, when they go to control a protest, they go and speak in all different languages. No, of course they don't. Of course they don't. No, uh, they should have gone to him, just spoke to him in uh, French. They don't even, they hate Europe anyway. Those people 
you know, Nigel Farage, he totally disrespected the European Parliament and the European, uh, you know, what again, whatever you think about it, you've got to be a grown-up in politics. What's happened to this Benny Hill politics, you know, where everything's just ridiculous and childish and, um, you know, it, it, respect, even if you can't, you can't um, make people agree with you on what you think in politics, but you can respect people. You don't have to treat people, you know, like they're fools or whatever. Nigel Farage is a horrible person, in my opinion, anyway. And people like him, Suella Braverman. I mean, him and Suella Braverman, they're like a match made in heaven, aren't they? Nasty, horrible people. So, you know, well... Bridget, you say it'll never be as it was, but, well, it won't, not in my lifetime, it won't. I always used to think, oh, God, you know, my hopes are with the young people, but now I'm not sure now because young people seem to be doing all these terrible things. It, it's just like everything's, uh, sorry, I'm like, I'm ranting on, I'm getting it. I should be, well, on the positive side, on the positive side, I think <laughs> there will be a different government this year. I just feel it can't get any worse, but maybe I'm wrong. But I'll tell you what, if it does get worse, that's it. I'm changing my passport and I'm going to become Spanish because I've hung on to my British passport. I could become Spanish. I've lived here long enough, but I've hung on to my British passport because I am British, you know, and I've always felt proud of being British until the last few years. And... Um, so I've hung on to my British passport, but if I couldn't take it, you know, if it's going to go on again, I'm definitely going to swap it over, definitely. Oh, okay, I think that's my rant over. I didn't rant as much as I thought I was going to rant, actually, but um, I will be uh, back later. I've got, a, I've got a premiere going out soon, and also tonight I'll be up with an up on the Sydney situation there is no update on the Samantha Murphy case as far as I know or not maybe today in Australia something else will happen I have got a premiere going out, out about Madeline Soto but it's not really an update of the case nothing's happened just some information so anyway sorry coming on and having a little run and what have you but um I've been trying to stay away from politics because it just British politics just because it is election year. I'm just counting down the time till the government goes, till this government goes. But I know that coming up to the election, there's going to be some really nasty, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a battle, isn't it? It's going to be a bum fight. So there's going to be things that are going to wind me up, I suppose. You're working tonight, Bridget. I hope you're busy. I hope you're busy. I hope everything's going well in your bar and everything. Uh, where are we? We're in April. Is that a good time of the year? Quite now the nicer weather's coming. Well, it's supposed to be. Hopefully you'll get be busy at work. But anyway, thank you to all of you watching me have a run. And I would just want to say, I feel a little bit sorry for Jurgis, who's a... Uh, tuned in from Melbourne, Australia, he's probably thinking, oh my God, what's this woman ranting on about? But I will be back later on tonight with some updates and we're going to talk about the situation in Sydney. Lots of things I want to talk to uh, talk to you about that, you know, about the two recent incidents, the two stabbing incidents. I've got lots of things to talk about about that. So thank you. Hi, Maltese. I know, why does it, is it just, I suppose all politics get nasty, I don't know, Spanish politics do as well, but I don't really take loads of notice about it. But anyway, let me just say a hello to everyone who was here and just suffered through that. Hi Chumba, hi Ali. Hi Vivian. Bridget, I've said hello to, Jürgen, I've said hello to. And anyone else, and Maltese, and anyone else that was watching at home, uh yeah well let me know what you think and you know what i really don't mind if you disagree agree with me you might think nigel farage is the best thing since sliced bread you know please you know 
have your opinions. That's no problem. As long as your opinions are respectful, I don't mind. Okay. So until I see you later, until I see you in the next video, may your God go with you.